My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Darkest Dungeon, specifically the Color of Madness DLC. Off the top, I have an apology to make. There was no episode yesterday, but I promise you I had an excellent reason, a very, very an, an unimpeachable reason. I was in the hospital. Oh, what? You expected it was going to be some garbage reason, like, oh, I had a headache, oh, I wasn't really feeling it, oh, I had to wash my hair. No. I was straight up hospitalized. That's right. I, uh, I kind of beefed it hardcore and uh, messed up my knee. Basically, what happened is I got myself hospitalized with knee injury after I found, walking down the street, three separate orphanages, each on fire, the staff and all of the children inside desperately calling for help. And of course, I sprinted into action. Uh, I managed to get through one and two without any problems, but the third, the third orphanage was on the second floor of a different building. And as the flames began to rise, I realized that I couldn't go down the stairs and I was carrying the last orphan in the entire building. This, this crying child, this baby, couldn't have been more than six months old. And so I decided to leap out of the window heroically, land like a superhero, and unfortunately, that's what's done my knee. And it was... Uh, Ultimately, I think, in the end, worth it. Alternatively, it is possible that I screwed up my knee trying to get out of bed badly. That's fine, though. It's one of those two. It's definitely one of those two. And the important thing to know is that they're equally likely. Although it was definitely the latter. So, what else do we have to say at the top of this episode? All right, uh, it's a new estate, by the way. This is the second time I've recorded this episode, and the first time I recorded two episodes in a row, and they both went quite swimmingly, except for the second one, uh, where I learned a couple of new negative mechanics. But, <laughs> my hard drive was full, so all of it past the first five minutes was corrupted. In fact, the first five minutes was also corrupted because I record in MP4 rather than FLV. That's only going to make sense to a very, very small number of you. But basically, it means that none of that footage is recoverable. Yay! So instead, I restarted another campaign, named it The Darkest Rap City, eh? and went past the first two weeks. Because, hey, we've seen those before. So now we're basically up to where we were in the last campaign, just with a different campaign, because the last one was irrecoverable. Savvy? Savvy. All right, only took me three minutes to get through the intro there. So, we've now a different party. We've Reynard, who is flawed release, so lower crit on range skills, as well as has the Hippocratic skill quirk, which is for an increase on your healing skills. Dismas didn't get changed. Hovill is our new Plague Doctor, who is a wheel tactician, an unholy slayer, which is extra accuracy and extra crit, which is the thing you want on a Plague Doctor, right? Because they actually can crit with their Plague Grenade, and it's nice. It gives them a little bit of uh, stress heal. Or does it? I don't think you actually stress heal on crits anymore. Do you? I can't remember. I cannot remember for the life of me right now. But regardless, you do want to crit with Blights, and you also want extra accuracy on Blights, so they're real good and you use blights often against the unholy so all is good so far then there's also on guard which is again really really good for a plague doctor because you want to be as fast as possible so that you can get that blight off in the first round before your enemies diurnal means lower speed on low torch we're not going to have that active often and hylomania means that they are obsessed with material things which means they're going to effectively try and loot a bunch of stuff that i don't want them to loot so if we can remove that early i'd like to do so we've also got gernon who is our apprentice Vestal, who has irrepressibility, a 5% virtue chance, as well as they are a fair weather fighter. They get plus 20% damage if their HP is above 99%. However, they are compulsive, which is really bad. I've spoken about this before, but it's again, the, gonna force them into, uh, to interact with a lot of curios negatively. Uh, and on top of that, also, before anyone says, this was cleared up in my patron Discord, uh, that is in the patron section of my Discord. The Discord's linked in the description down below, by the way. You want to hang out. Uh, but it was cleared up that you can't force them anymore. You used to be able to. 
you can't force them to use an item when they try and force themselves to use a curio. So there's no way around that, unfortunately, at the moment. And they also have the yips, negative five accuracy, which you definitely don't want. But if you're going to have it on anyone that you have to take, I guess a Vessel's probably the right one because they've got the Divine, Gra uh, Divine Grace as well as the Divine Comfort, which don't roll on accuracy. We uh, also have Benier. I I'm going to be butchering a lot of these names. Unfortunately, I have to imagine you can forgive me because they're difficult names. Uh, a Seeker Bounty Hunter, who is a Daredevil, has plus 15 dodge if their HP is below 25%, as well as Irrepressible Gain plus five to their virtue charts. Uh, they also have flawed release, negative 5% crit on ranged skills, and they do have a ranged skill, Caltrops by base. That said, Caltrops, oh, Caltrops is actually high, uh, quite high crit. So hmm, that's actually significantly uh, significantly problematic for us. Uh, and they're also Iromaniac, which means they experience religious visions and delusions. In the ruins, that will actually force them to interact with a couple of curios, unfortunately. Uh, we've also got the Occultist Breveden, who is an Eldritch hater, which is excellent because occultists are already good against the Eldritch. I mean, have a look at Sacrificial Stab, which is their basic attack, has 15% extra damage against Eldritch. It's just nice, y'all. Uh, we're not going to see Eldritch for a while, so it's not going to be that relevant. They're also thin blooded, negative 10% blight resist. Not going to see blight for a while, so it's fine. And resolution, they won't drink in town. And finally, we've got Patri, who is a Cove Explorer, has plus 10% scouting chance in the Cove, as well as Blutomania, which triggers very, very rarely. Uh, there are not that many curios with which a Blutomania triggers. I think mirrors? Anything that has a reflective surface? Is it? Because mirrors and ponds, occasionally they'll interact with that. And they're scientific, so they are not really going to be running with the Vestal that often. We also decided not to take from the stagecoach Tang Sok, who is a secret arbalist who has Beast Slayer, which is extra accuracy and extra crit versus beast, as well as Spiritual, extra healing received from Divine Grace and Comfort, because they have Fear of Eldritch and Fear of Unholy, which is going to increase their stress by 15% taken to either of those types, as well as lower their accuracy by 10 against either of those types. And we're going to be fighting a lot of Eldritch and Unholy early. Consider that Unholy and Eldritch is basically all of the wields, and Eldritch is all of the Cove, and Unholy is all of the Ruins. So we really can't afford to take Tangsa. She's just not good enough, unfortunately. Have a look here Trinkets to see if there's anything charms, desperate. Gathered from all the forgotten corners of the Earth. Did this haste chalice get better? Hmm. Maybe. Uh, Bloodthirst Ring is negative 100% food consumed, as well as plus 10% to your max HP and negative 25% to healing received. So basically, you can run without food on a character. All right. All right, 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 all right. Now, ladies, yeah. Uh, we've also picked up a Dodge Stone for plus four dodge for negative one speed. Almost never really worth a trade-off unless you have a character that's so fast that you know that they're going to act first regardless, or so slow that you know they're going to act last regardless. And the debuff stone. I guess if we had debuffs that we desperately needed to hit, we could use that. But we don't, so we won't. All right, we're probably going to take the usual suspects out on another mission. Youth Chalice, plus 20% damage versus negative 10% damage. Uh, sorry, plus 20% max HP for negative 10% damage on the Vestal. That's not that bad, frankly. That is not that bad. That said, I also do want to try and go on the longest missions available at all times so that I can try and get as much EXP and as much uh, loot as is possible as quickly as is possible. Is there anyone else I actually, like, desperately want to take on this mission? I don't think so. I think I want to take the same party, basically. Almost didn't make it back last time. Get on. Come on. You have, like, 30 stress. Stop complaining. Let's go to provisioning. All right, we're going on a medium mission, so I'm going to take 20 food. I'm, I'm going to be a little bit liberal with my purchasing here, and that's because I don't exactly remember the numbers for the kinds of things that you want to buy for uh, medium missions anymore. I used to know them all off by heart, and I would just automatically do them as soon as I went into a mission, but I don't remember anymore. I'm going to get three keys because it is possible that we get a secret room and if i don't have a key for a secret room i will be a sad man as it turns out uh, i'll also take three shovels just in case two medicinal herbs 
Total of three holy water, just because clearing fountains and clearing, like, eldritch shrines is excellent. And that's that. Seems good to me. Let's go. Oh. Yeah, so I, I just got discharged from the, the hospital. So, yay. That's fun. Mm. Gotta go back for MRI and surgery, but you know. The must be driven back. For the time being. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line. They've bandaged me up and giving me painkillers, and I am all good right now. Okay, so I used to know... Well, okay, okay, so here's something I need to explain. I don't really work off of knowledge. For the games that I'm a little bit better at, you might assume I do. I don't. I bypass knowledge. I work off of experience, which means I suck at a lot of things really, really early, but then I suck at them for long enough that I eventually get good at recognizing what to do to not suck is probably the easiest way to describe that. So I don't know the numbers for all of the curios. I just know how I've interacted with them in the past and what I got as a result, right? So... For all of the books in the ruins, I know that books are garbage. That's that's what I have ingrained over the course of my time with Darkest Dungeon. But recently, I was told that apparently the book chances have changed as to what they do. This specific one, if I recall correctly, now is 20% chance for scouting, 20% chance for plus 15 stress, 20% chance for nothing... 13.3% chance for a positive quirk, 6.7% chance for a negative quirk. I promise you, I'm not reading this off of anything. And, oh God, that means there's another 20% missing. 20% uh, chance for a journal page. Oh, baby. So, that's worth it, right? It used to have, I think, a higher chance for a negative quirk. Anyhow, I'm going to get someone to interact, interact with this. Someone, ideally... Whoa, you have a debuff charm? Why do you have a debuff charm on you? I should not have given you that. Oh, I probably gave it to you just to get it home from the camps. Oh. Well, plus 20% debuff resist is not that bad. You also do have the lowest dodge out of everyone. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so let's interact with this on someone who has the lowest amount of stress. Pages are unsettling, and we got 15 stress. Fair enough. Getting positive quirks pretty early on is ridiculously powerful, so you can imagine why I wanted to try. Uh, it's also worth noting, Hovil actually has, like, a really good skill setup, so that's super handy. Unfortunately, Ganon only has Divine Grace, Dazzling Light, and Judgment of the ones I need. If she had Divine Comfort, she would be perfect. Unfortunately, she doesn't. That was like a 68, probably, across party. Cool. So I've done that basically just to... Oh, nice crit. I've done that basic... Ah, so crits still do self-hit. Nice. Um, but I've done that just to set up this, which is going to kill the front two liners. No quarter. Frankly, pretty good for the first turn. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. And since the front liner died of blight, they left no corpse, which puts them into a position where I am much much more capable of punishing them for living. Is broken. Maintain the offensive. Okay. Show me scouting. Hey. So 100% of room battles means that, damn, I do need to go to this room. I don't really have a choice. Ooh. Okay, I will actually check what this book does now because I need to... What is it? I need to retrain my knowledge effectively. Runes, curios. And this this is effectively how I'm going to do it, right? If if this was my first time playing Darkest Dungeon, I would be happy to make a bunch of mistakes, like, you know, use curios without knowing what they do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But since I've used and interacted with the Curio many times, and then it was changed on me, I feel like it's something I should just know. Uh, so it is a stack of knowledge. Cool. 
So it is still an 11% chance for a random negative quirk. We'll not use it for that reason. Books are garbage. Screw books. Mm -hmm. I want to fight this in low light. Yeah. So I'm going to fight this in the amount of light that I currently have. Because I've scouted it, it means that they can't surprise me, which is extremely handy, as you might imagine. Oh, I could try and stun the back two liners. Rather than blight them. No, it's blight. Wow. Oh, that back line is still not dead. Damn, that blight did nothing, basically. A faint hope blossoms. Okay. Stunning the cultist brawler, at least. So part of the reason I'm fighting in low light is so that it's not so bad when I turn up my light before I loot this chest and then go outside and loot that iron maiden. Yeah, I did bring a medicinal herb, so I've got something to loot it with. Don't work, don't work, don't work. Thank you. I am really pleased, actually, with how that worked out. What? She's got 20% blight resist. We have 100% blight chance, so it's it's actually not multiplicative or anything like that. It's just straight up additive. So she had an 80%, she had, a, sorry, a 20% chance to resist each of those signs, and she hit both of them. So 20% of 20% in order to miss on both of those hits, she had a 4% chance to be dodging both of them. And she did it. The Mad Woman. She did that. Who did that? She. What'd she do? That. She did that. Thank you for the kill. Despite the years, Ganon actually hit there. Excellent. All right, so that's both of the stress dealers dead early. Uh, we want to kill the Cultist Brawler earlier because they have higher crit than the Bone Defender and they also apply bleed. I'm also really incentivized to try and remove that poison right now. Poison, the bleed. Yeah, because I saved 3 HP by removing that bleed before it ever triggered. Ah! Well, I was never going to be able to stop the Cultist Brawler from taking that turn anyway. Okay. Perfect. That Cultist Brawler is now dead. If we can stun this Bone Defender before its turn... Oh, of course we can't. We stunned it last round. That's my bad. I should have just hit it straight up. It's, uh, it's entirely my bad. A death by inches. I mean, since you've attacked before the Vestal, now it's actually a better option for me to just heal as much as I can this round and next round as well. Just wait for you to die after that. This is not considered stalling because this enemy is already dead. They just don't know it yet. Hopefully the Vestal goes next. Never the mind. Slow death. Unforeseen. The Vestal's speed is four. That guy's speed is zero. So the Vestal should definitely be going faster, but unfortunately it wasn't. Darkness closes in, haunting the hearts of men. Mm. I did this for extra loot and we're not getting it. Okay. Packs laden wow. Are often low on supplies. We got dunked on. Irrepressible and fair weather. With both the Yips and Compulsive, I'm going to remove Ganon from my party literally as soon as I can. So if she gets a negative quirk here, it's not that bad. If she gets a positive one, it might save me from removing her from my party. Okay, she gets a positive. It's Warrior of Light. She gets plus 10% damage. I mean, someone with both Fairweather and Warrior of Light would be a force with which to reckon. I don't want to do that fight in low light. So I'm going to As the light buff us purchase, back up. Spirits are hey, what up, Collector? Made clear. This is a Collector, and he is my friend. He will give me much money. His stun resist is 50%, but 
I'm going to roll two attempts to stun because if we can stun him on the first turn, holy crumbs! We can get some good stuff going on. We can get so much damage out. His speed is four, so both of our DOT classes should act before him. Our chance to stun here is literally zero, so we should probably go for damage. We will need to kill the Collector first because the Collector often summons enemies that will then heal the Collector, which is bad for me. Oh God. That's not good. We need to get these Dismuses out of here, these collected highwaymen. Because they will really muck up our day. I'm going to shoot across the party, basically just to guarantee the collected highwayman is dead. Light on the back line. Hit both as well. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Okay. The collected highwayman. So the collected highwayman has only one action. It's a slice, right? Wicked slice or something like that. Uh, the man at arms can only guard, and the collector can summon, they can reheal themselves, they can do a bunch of different stuff, right? I'm not going to explain everyone's moves. But the, the important thing is that the collector, last I checked, can only summon the man at arms, the highwayman, and the vestal, and each of them only have one move, right? Highwayman, damage, man at arms, protection, and the vestal healing. So if they have a man at arms and a vestal out, you used to be able to farm that right? Because you could just leave them on the field forever and it'd be fine. I don't think you can do that anymore. I think the new stall mechanics will actually prevent me. There's a life steal. Ooh, heal by 10. That's not that good. Ah, uh, headhunt. Right. It just looks like Wicked Slice. Slowly. Gently. This is how a life is taken. That's eight damage that I'm going to heal if I use a battlefield medicine here instead of blighting. And I also heal for two, so that was a ten damage heal. It's pretty big. Unfortunately, I do need to kill the collector, so... Continually garbaging this up is not great. The Vestal should really be healing right now. Unfortunately, it's a bit rough to get it to do that. Five on the back line. Oh, they both resisted! Mm. That's not good. That's really not good. Thank you for missing, though. Thank you for being a tool. Oh! He steals again, gets himself back up. All right, we need to start using the Vestal purely to heal. Man at arms, please. Man, man at arms. Oh! I'm so mad. We got crit down to death's door. A hand's breadth from becoming a oh. I needed her to kill the man at arms so that I can actually target the collector, because otherwise he's just gonna sit there and keep healing himself back up. I've got to get the Crusader off Death's Door, unfortunately. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now, video game. That is not okay. I'd love to do something other than heal with the Vessel. Trust me. Miss. That might be the opposite of missing. In fact, you crit and bled. It is possible that as soon as Hoville takes their turn, they die. Thankfully, they did not. Hoville's mainly my DPS right now, so that's not good. I should have just targeted the front line. More dust, more ashes. 
I'm gonna have to abandon this mission as soon as we. Game. Injury and despondence set the stage for heroism. See, the thing is, if I just follow or if, if I just focus on all of the creeps and never damage the collector, the collector will just heal back up and summon more creeps. Collector's now dead. A predator has often blind to its own peril. The light. All right. The promise of safety. I'm gonna go forward until this treasure. Hopefully, loot it with the light out. Nope. Ganon reads it and becomes a Cove Explorer. And we are going to abandon the quest because there's not that much else that we could do at that point. And of yourself. Yay! Will invariably lead to defeat. Ascetic. Okay, so negative. Distress heal, a blue to manic, and you are now sickly. So, greater chance of disease resist. You've also gone and got yourself afflicted. Though long years may seek to separate them, action and consequence will invariably have their dreadful reunion. Well, that sucked. Hylomanic risk taker. Probably not going to take the Antiquarian here. Fragile Lurker. Probably not that Crusader either. Slow Draw, but your Ruins Explorer and a Ruins Adventurer. Slow Draw's bad, but... To those with a keen eye, gold gleams like a dagger's point. Cove Explorer and Eldritch Hater uh, makes you a lot better in the Cove. That said, you probably still don't go to the Cove because you won't be able to bleed the enemies there. Mm, still take the Houndmaster. Probably not going to take either of the other two, though. And his faithful beast, a bond forged by battle and bloodshed. I'm frankly pretty frustrated to have lost the Plague Doctor to that much BS in a row. What I should have been doing... Covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. What I should have been doing that whole time is just consistently healing with the healer, but I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to get enough damage on the back line in order to kill the collector before the collector just resummoned and life stole and resummoned and life stole and resummoned and life stole. So in retrospect, uh, how would I have done that fight differently and how would it have helped me? I would have used the Vestal to heal at every available opportunity. That would have probably freed me up to not use the Plague Doctor to have to use their healing magics to remove blights and on the turn that the plague doctor died i should have had the plague doctor heal them uh no, no no that didn't even kill them no it was a different turn that they okay never mind never the... that said there was a turn where the plague doctor was on death's door and i had the plague doctor heal someone else uh, just so that I could remove two bleeds rather than having the Plague Doctor heal themselves to remove them from Death's Door. That didn't end up kicking me in the butt. It was a later one when the Plague Doctor actually had some HP back uh, that they were hit with a giant crit and a bleed was applied and their turn was next and then they died. Sometimes there's not too much you can do about it, unfortunately. The true test of skill in Darkest Dungeon is not how best you can avoid... Well, I mean, okay, never mind. It, it, it is technically how best you can mitigate the worst effects of negative RNG. But it's also your resilience, your ability to come back after being knocked down. And while I've explored two rooms in this entire episode, we got knocked down pretty damn hard. I don't know if... Uh, hmm. Dismiss, you are a known cheat, so you can't gamble, right? Uh... Probably, hang on. Ganon, do you have anything you need to do? None in particular. Okay. Let's throw you in there. Throw Dismas in there. So I need to find a new party out of everyone else. That's probably not going to be that bad, but at the same rate, I'm again wanting to go on longer missions. Hmm. Well. 
can probably go to the wield. Should definitely take uh, You can be a second liner right now, which is is not a garbage position for you to be in. You've got a stun that has a 110% chance to hit. And you can use your heal from that. Hmm, okay. But now you want to be second as well. Patrick can be second line. You can be taken with this party as well as a frontliner. And then we'll probably just put Fossad and Val in the back line. Ooh, hang on. Fossad. Shadow Fade. Gives you plus 80% damage. Plus, It has to be all of that for two rounds, right? You can't get plus 80% damage twice, right? Otherwise, you start the battle in the second position. You Shadow Fade. You Lunge. You Shadow Fade. And then you have plus 180% damage. And that's just not like a thing. Hmm. All right. Well, I should change some of your abilities. Make no mistake. We will face ever greater threats. Our soldiers must be ready. Defend is pretty important. I'll take that over commands. And then for Fossard, we probably want to pick up Pick to the Face. The third liner, right? I think you're my third liner. So we'll pick up Pick to the Face instead of Shadow Fade. I mean, if you're my third liner, we could take a Lunge as a finisher. We're probably actually not going to be blighting that many things. So instead, we'll drop both of those and take all of the dagger as well as a pick. And then we've got Val, who should unlock Hounds Harry and Lick Wounds. And considering where Val is, we should be doing that. All right. So debuff resists. I mean, debuff resists for negative two dodge is probably something we want on someone right now. We'll put it on Patri. Because they've already got the lowest dodge, so it's less effective. Okay. And we'll go for this mission in the wheels. I wasn't planning to do a second run in this episode, but the first run uh, was garbage trash from hell. So we will. I'll be taking one of each of these because there's a variety of different trinkets that need very different things here. I'll also take two total shovels, one for an obstacle and one for digging up a grave if we get one, and I'll take an extra torch. has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil. <sighs> okay. I'm going to try and pull one of the Fusiliers out of position. Damn, that's really unfortunate. If they had been pulled out of position, they would have been pulled into the front row where they can't do blanket fire. They're incapable of using that move. Um. Pick to the face because it's armor piercing, so we'll ignore that prot. Kind of want to hounds Harry the party. That's what I get. That's what I get for trying. Just stun that frontliner. Negate their turn. Moves them into a position where a twin daggers might kill them this turn. And it doesn't. 
Well, at least this is kind of a, a cluster on everyone's side. Can you please just pull that person out of position? Like, GD. Confidence surges as the enemy Gosh darn. So our pull chance is probably 100%. Your move resist is 25%. So 25% of 25% is... Yeah, so it's 100. So 25% of 25% represents the chance that you dodge it, right? So 6.25%, the chance that you dodged both of those. Stop, stop, game, stop, stop. Too much dodge. It's too much. Too much dodge. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. Ugh. At least uh, Fossard is constantly getting the better of him. See, damage across the party is like the worst kind of damage for me. Well, save for giant crits to my characters. But damage across the body is pretty bad because I don't have AoE healing skills. Oh, nice. We crit heal for 26. And it looks like we didn't even bleed him. Hell yeah. That's what the occultist can occasionally do. The occultist's healing skill heals at this level from 0 to 13. So it can roll 0. Uh, and then it can crit. So 26 represents a high roll in terms of damage. And then it also crit as well. Best I can do right now. Thankfully, the pull. No, what? I'm just gonna. Lunge. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. If I use the eldritch pull there, it would have cleared all of the corpses. So, it's handy. Yeah, Twenty-five. Laden with loot, are often low on supplies. Unfortunately, having a obstacle this early means that I'm gonna have to hold on to the other shovel just in case there's another obstacle later oh great that is that is something with which i can interact using holy water in order to remove a negative quirk please pull thank you rush so and it moves them back Try and kill the Fusilier. Mm, I mean, just short. Five damage, debuffed yourself without getting a great result. I'm going to use Retribution here. Please tell me it hasn't been completely changed. Okay, never mind. It's going to activate Repost for us. Give them so no if anyone order. hits our front line, are we going to hit him back? And since the Cutthroat was out of position, being in the very back line, they only had one move. Harmless Poke. Which is exactly what it sounds like it is. I'm actually going to lunge right now because the possibility of removing this Brigand Cutthroat before its turn is actually really important. And we managed to. Excellent. Sure. on the back line of a three plus a possible bleed it does hit the bleed two for six so that's a total of uh, three plus six, nine nine damage total we heal for one and we bleed you for an extra one over three rounds so the word reconstruction all ha also has the possibility of bleeding which is not a great thing have to heal myself unfortunately come on that's 10 more damage on the occultist right there by the way i wasn't trying to stun this guy yeah because putting him to the back is going to make it really difficult to hit them but also they have 50 percent stun resist so it's possible we do that and then don't even stun them anyway Okay. 
The enemy is size two. That's why the stalling mechanics haven't activated yet. Just in case you're wondering. Do you really have to bleed everyone, please? Like, I have a bandage. I didn't want to use it yet, but that's too much. Can't lunge next turn, but we can pick to the face. Got him. The victory. Perhaps the turning point. Alright. Uh Blutomania and Scientific, I want both of those gone. Resolution, I don't care about. Thin blooded, I don't really care about. Slow draw, I definitely want gone. Okay. So we'll have the Grave Robber interact with it, and the slow draw quirk has been removed. Good lord. This is a short dungeon, and this is our second obstacle already. If we get another obstacle... A victim to the spreading corruption. That's actually insanely unlucky if we get another one. Like, good gosh, y'all. We have to kill those cultist acolytes basically as soon as is possible. We'll probably even lunge on the first turn. Go, cool, one down. And another one was played with, but was not stunned. Cytokinesis means that enemy is going to split. Which is not great. Eh. I mean, all in all, they did very little that turn. Nice dodge. Eh, but it looks like we might respond with very little of our own. Cool. Killed her. That's extremely important. Cytokinesis. Crit as well. Oh, boy. I remember reading the patch notes and they said that on average, the game has gotten easier. You know that gif of John Cena putting his head through a thing and then saying, Are you sure about that? That's that's my feelings right now. In a gif. That said, I'm I'm very well aware of the fact that the early game is some of the hardest of this game. Early game is just a real hard time to be alive. I keep rolling on the high end of their damage. It's nice. One down. Heavily unfortunate I have to keep using my backline entirely to heal, despite the fact that that's not really helping us control the enemies. Six and six is good. Nice. Ten's a really good heal. Eh, bleed, so it only helped for... Uh, health. It only healed for seven, ultimately. But still. One down. I mean, if they use Cytokinesis every round, I'm going to need to... I think ultimately the goal here is get everyone on low HP and then kill them all in the same round. Sedated. As long as they don't crit, I think we're actually kind of making out like a bandit here. Like we're getting more healing and stress healing than they are damage and stress damage. Well, I mean, we were. Nice dodge. I'm doing exactly as I said. Usually you don't do this in fights, spread around the damage, but with enemies that are going to, you know, kind of uh, bring themselves to life, like an auto-evanescence, we kind of need to. 
As much as I want to be stress healing or party healing or anything of those kinds of things, we are going to need to do some kills here. Just one left, and you slime. Oh, baby, that's a mistake. This is pretty early on, but I feel like I might want to rest now. This expedition at least promises. Oh, success. never mind. This isn't even a long dungeon. But 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 uh, complete 100% of room battles, so we're gonna have to go up here. There is another obstacle. This is a short dungeon. We've encountered three obstacles. I just need you to know that. We do have two characters with high trap to sum. Really. Carelessness will find no clemency in this place. That can be dug up, by the way, and uh, we don't have the ability to. I'm going to save my food right now because I know for a fact that I'm going to get punished if I don't. I, I guess I have to go up and hope that I get a... I hope that this is the only room battle, that there's no room battle over here. That gets interacted with with anti-venom, which we don't have. There's two fights in a row in this hallway as well, which is garbage. Oh. Things aren't going great. Stun you, move you back. Uh, they can't actually do their best move from there, so they actually do a stumbling scratch and move themselves forward. Yeah, I'm going to lunge just to make sure that I kill that Acolyte before they get any more stress out because there's the stumbling scratch. Has lower accuracy, I believe, and it also can't bleed. Nice. All right, the Occultist is actually hitting some really good heals right now. As much as I want to be party stress healing right now, these guys have a pretty mean crit chance. When choosing which of those to stun, I chose the back one so that I could move them back so that they would have... Basically, they're stunned for two turns right now. They're stunned for the turn they're stunned for, and then the turn after, they're going to try and stumbling scratch, and that's not good. It's probably not going to hit, you know, so it's probably garbage. It's going to give me an opportunity here to stress heal. Crit on a heal for one and heals for two. At least we resisted the bleed. Well, one's dead. Thankfully, we didn't crit there, so this guy's still going to have to stumbling scratch if he wants to attack. Thank you. Body stress heal again. Yeah, didn't go great. Okay. Thank you for dodging. Very pleased you did. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Three doggies, but they're all surprised. We have to turn on the light, right? Because we're going to have the light in, in the next fight anyway. May we find victory. So these doggies have quite high dodge and quite high speed for this point in the game. So we need to roll basically every attack that we can against them because it's going to be... Oh, it's going to be a problem if we don't. Cool. Decimated. Not decimated. We destroyed all of them rather than the tenth. All right. Getting two of them down in the first round is really, really good because these guys have Rabbit Rush, which can give you rabies, which is a disease that I would then have to go and cure. Super frustrating. It takes a long time. I didn't reshuffle my party before I started this fight, did I? That's my fault. I should have been able to lunge there, but uh, but I'm not because I didn't reshuffle my party before I started this fight. Right, healing for 12 is pretty important there considering the fact that we're going to be bleeding for a super long period of time. That guy's probably... Yep, you're bleeding. 
So that means that this turn, instead of attacking, I'm actually just going to wait. Hopefully, I get some good actions before the doggy does. Slowly, Never mind. Gently. This is how a life is taken. Okay. Loot this. No shovel. Oh, well. Guess I've really got to hope that there's no room fight in this final room. Ectoplasm and they're surprised. Okay, we could get some stuff going on here. We should be attacking here. As much as I want to do everything but, uh, we kind of need to. One down. Two down. And the last one's on a very small amount of HP. And you slimes without a crit. Okay. The hound master, the, sorry, the grave robber will definitely act before this enemy. So I'm free to do pretty much any other actions I want first and then resolve it with the grave robber. Okay. Mission is complete, excellent. So, if we had to victory. take down an obstacle with our hands rather than a shovel, it would give us an immense amount of stress across the entire party. It would be a problem. A capital P problem. The agents of pestilence will yet be driven from our woods. Okay. Clotter, skilled gambler, increases the chance of winning while gambling. Uh, ruins tactician, plus 15% damage in ruins. And plus 15 bleed resist. All of those pretty good. Yep, that mission went pretty well. Despite the rocky she opening. She has paid dearly for her freedom. That deserves better than this place. Oh, uh, Ganon is now a flagellant, which means they are only going to flagellate in town for stress relief. That's frustrating. And we've got Russell, who has plus five accuracy on range skills, as well as negative five accuracy. But all of your skills are ranged. So, kind of good. Uh, you also have a negative five percent to your virtue chance. So we can definitely take her. Uh, who's next? Evelyn, who has a guilty conscience. That only makes you interact with a couple curios. Not that bad. Uh, Warren's phobe, and you've got a last gasp. I mean, we'll take you as just like a backup Vestal. Probably not going to need you, though. Dispoma uh, Dipsomania is actually really bad in the areas in which it activates, so we're probably not going to take uh, Malviasen as a result. And you'll only meditate, uh, meditate, meditate in town, rather. Selly is a slugger who's mercurial. Okay, you're our kind of guy, Selly. Elusive, evasive, persistent. Righteous traits for a rogue. Technically, there's no reason not to take Malvasin right now, but I know I'm not going to take them out on the next mission. And you don't have a problem. Like, nothing's bad with picking someone up and then just letting them go immediately. That's fine. Uh, but we're going to try and steer clear of making decisions that are entirely unimpactful in any way. Just for the tiny little chance that they might have an effect. Uh, is that true? No. We'll take him, but he's the first one we're going to throw away. Trying to speak that out loud immediately told me how wrong it was. Anyhow, for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Sorry This Episode Is Late. Uh, but again, Hospital. So, I'm pretty sure that's like a great excuse. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.